Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Simic Ramp. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys have had a fantastic week. I hope you're getting ready for a fantastic weekend as well. Uh, for the first time ever, I don't really have anything to do this weekend, so I'm actually really excited about that. Uh, hopefully, Caitlin and I can get some R&R &R because it has been a busy time. But today, guys, we are jumping into a bit of a classic. We have got Simic Ramp here uh, featuring some of my favorite cards in current standard along with some new cards that I haven't yet played with that I'm really excited to because I think they are quite good. Uh, so first and foremost, we got it guys. We got Glorious Sunrise in here. Uh, you guys know this is what uh, John and I have based the podcast on. We love this card collectively and for good reason. It does quite a lot in any kind of ramp deck uh, or even just creature based deck. Uh, and so uh, to get this down as early as possible is certainly a good start for us. This will give us all of the momentum that we might need to get to even bigger spells. Uh, and as you can see, we've got quite a few, uh, including the uh, the world spell, which is a card that I have not yet played with. This is a brand new one for me. Uh, on one and two, you can look at the top seven cards of your deck. You reveal a non-saga permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. You put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order, but on number three, you put up to two non-Saga permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Uh, and obviously in a ramp deck like this, we have got some big stuff we want to put on the battlefield. We got the Huntmaster, we got the Titan, we got the Caretaker. Honestly, we got the Glorious Sunrise and we have Sphinx of the Clear Skies, another card that I have not yet played with, uh, but that I find really interesting. It's got that flying evasiveness, it's got that ward cost, which means it's just going to be a little bit trickier to deal with. Uh, but on top of that, it works really well in this deck to keep refilling the hand, uh, which is generally speaking kind of one of the big pitfalls with a lot of ramp decks is that you really don't have a whole lot to go on after you get the first round of big stuff onto the field. So uh, assuming this is going to be able to attack in, we should be able to refill our hand a little bit. The opponent's going to separate some cards into some piles. We pick the best one and we get those into our hand. Uh, we do feature Spara's headquarters here as a way of boosting boosting up the, the domain here, so we can get up to three cards, which is very helpful. Uh, now, speaking of very helpful, with Glorious Sunrise, you do have to consider we need creatures with power three or greater to be able to draw cards. Uh, and so you'll notice in our three job slot, we both have Jewel Thief, which is gonna come in, create a treasure token to help ramp us, also has Vigilance and Trample, uh, but we also have that Topiary Stopper, which is gonna get us a land. It's also gonna count uh, thanks to that, that high power uh, in that three slot. Uh, now we also have the Loam Speaker here. This is actually a really good addition in my opinion. Um, a lot of the base lists that I was seeing didn't actually run this, which I found a little tricky uh, or, or just a little bit difficult to understand. On one hand, it gives you one mana of any color. So uh, it does help fix us for these later hits where we've got three green, two blue, those kinds of things. But on top of that, uh, you can tap it and target land you control becomes a 3-3 with haste, which does activate that Glorious Sunrise and give us that extra card draw opportunity. So just a really nice one there for that. Uh, the rest of the deck here is some, some little draw spells as well as some interactive pieces. So we do have Silver Scrutiny. Obviously, we can, we can Scrutiny for a lot <laughs> uh, if we want to, if we ramp into it. I have found it's best to just go for the max of three and just use that flash cost because we do have a lot of other things we can do. Make Disappear is a nice little interactive piece. It's only a two of here. I didn't want to go too crazy with it, uh, but I do think it's a really good card for us. Uh, and then, of course, Fading Hope as well, just to get things off the board and hopefully finish off the opponent as quickly as we can. So that is the deck, guys. I think this is going to be a really fun one. I was a little surprised that we didn't uh, have a Simic Ramp deck on the channel since Dominaria dropped. So uh, at least on my part, I didn't play one yet. So this is going to be a really interesting one, hopefully. Uh, we'll, we'll have some fun with it and hopefully learn a little bit along the way. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, and yeah, I will keep this, despite having two very high-end threats, uh, we do have a fairly large density of kind of mid-range threats as well. Uh, and so I'm not overly concerned with having too many of these in the hand, and there we go. Uh, so now the question becomes, do we just drop the Loam Speaker? And I think we will. 
Uh, like I said, we do have big stuff we want to get to, so obviously it's helpful to get as much of this down as we can. Uh, the opponent only on one land here, so kind of curious to see what they have, if anything, to actually remove this Loom Speaker. It looks like they might not. Uh, with that in mind, um, I guess the question becomes, do we attack in? I think we should. Uh, let's go ahead and suit up the, uh, the little coast here and we will get an attack in. We do get to leave up that make disappear for the counter option. Uh, we also just have fading hope, of course, if we need to bounce something back to their hand or whatever we need to do here. So uh, we'll see what the opponent might be up to this turn. I'm assuming they may have just like a good solid removal spell, uh, in which case definitely going to just make disappear most likely. Would love to get some lands. Uh, okay, that is a great one to make disappear. Uh, we do not want Graveyard Trespasser on the field, that is for sure. All right. <clears throat> uh, land is good, definitely what we want. Let's go ahead and suit up. Uh, we'll just suit up this forest and get the attack in here. All right. Uh, this is super nice because it does allow us that that little bit of extra power that we wouldn't normally get uh, And so I do appreciate that about that card um, And I think we may end up just fading hope here. It does give us a scry as well, which is quite nice So let's go ahead and do this just to get it off the field here And basically we're just kind of tempoing out the opponent as best we can definitely don't want another world spell We've already got one in hand. Uh, let's see what we've gotten all right, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and throw this down. Um, so there is a world where we actually don't attack solely from the standpoint of they may have a removal spell here for two. Uh, alternatively, we can just attack with the Loam Speaker. I'm actually going to take that route. It's a little bit safer. Uh, they're probably wondering why we're doing this. <laughs> Uh, but if they have a removal spell, we certainly don't want to just run a land into it because at that point we are really setting ourselves up for a rough time. Uh, I will go ahead and Fading Hope here. Perfect. All right. Uh, so again, we're just tempoing as best we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if that Lone Speaker sits, uh, that does mean we are going to get either a World Spell or a Titan on the field. It looks like it won't. That's okay. Ah, tasty. All right. Uh, so we just play land and pass. Hopefully we get another land on top. But truthfully, at this point, there's a lot of live draws. We really just don't want to hit a seven drop at this point. Uh, if we can get or, or fade, excuse me, a seven drop, we should be OK. OK, uh, sure. So I'm actually going to do this for two. This leaves open a handful of plays like the Loom Speaker. So uh, that was actually quite perfect. Now, again, we have the Glorious Sunrise. So even if they kill the Loam Speaker, at least we can get something down that's going to gain us a little bit of life back uh, and just make sure that we're not dying quite as quickly uh, because we do need one more land. And if we get one more land, we actually have quite a bit we're going to be able to do. Um, OK, sure. Uh, so Titan of Industry can come down, kill that Fable, probably shields up a little bit uh, just to make sure that if they have a removal spell, given that they've only got a couple cards in hand, uh, I think putting a shield counter on there is probably going to be the best bet. Uh, and then we can start to take over again with that Glorious Sunrise, theoretically. If we get a land, actually, it's probably best just a world spell. Yep. Uh, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and jump to uh, page three here. Uh, we will put both of these onto the battlefield. Um, all right. Let's put a shield counter, and I'm actually going to destroy that. Not particularly interested in losing it. Um, let's go ahead and draw a card. Again, we are going to need to draw as much as we can here to start refilling. Topiary Stomper, not bad, actually. I mean, it's a decent threat, uh, and so I think it's probably worthwhile throwing out there. Um, but now we've got that shield counter up. They're going to have to have either a double block plus a removal spell or something. Uh, they can voltage surge plus maybe an infernal grasp. Uh, but they are going to have to spend at least two spells to kind of get rid of this. Okay, cool. Uh, interesting. Do we think they actually have... Uh, I will take the block here. Um... 
Bit of a risky move. Certainly they could have, you know, any number of scary things, but uh, I'm not really interested in taking five. We'll be able to gain some life next turn if need be, um, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and Topiary Stomper. We're gonna go ahead and deck then before we draw. Uh, generally speaking, I find that to be a good plan. Uh, we will get, I guess it doesn't truly matter that much. Let's go ahead and draw here. Uh, very often we'll find ourselves drawing as much as possible. Um, I'm going to try and take out the Soren here. I'm not particularly interested in just straight losing 13 life. <laughs> uh, and this does have trample, so at the very least they are going to have to double block this if they want to save any amount of damage. Uh, yeah, so that's fine actually, as is. So we actually do deal one at least, which is quite nice. Uh, and we do still have that Topiary Stomper. Now they can kill it, of course, but we have the Make Disappear in hand to actually counter this. So uh, this actually works out quite nicely for us. Let's go ahead and get that out of there so they can't kill the Topiary Stomper. And now they are in a spot of, hey, we have to have a removal spell, basically. Uh, this has been a really good game. Uh, even if we completely die, it's been a good game. Uh, worth noting, again, Meat Hook Massacre uh, in, I guess, the next couple days is going to be gone. Um, I will 100% block this, knowing that they will most likely be just Meat Hooking. Um, not particularly interested in giving them the extra bonus off of that, and, you know, there's not really a huge reason to, to give it to them. Not super stoked about this Soren because the reality is they will probably be able to, to ultimate, or at least very soon ultimate. Um, thankfully, we can gain some life and hopefully get ourselves out of range here a little bit. Uh, but sure, they gain a life, that's fine. Let's draw just a creature would be great, honestly. Really anything um, impactful, like another Titan would be killer. Um, nice. I love the Workshop Warchief. That is one card I did not include in the deck. Uh, and I think for good reason, like we just have a lot of other things that we don't necessarily need it for, but um, it is just a really good card. Okay. Um, I think we take Topiary Stomper just to have a thing, you know? Uh, let's do this. I'm actually just gonna play this out then. Uh, and this is gonna give us another land. Uh, again, the nice thing about Glorious Sunrise, it just kind of does a little bit of everything, and it's exactly what you need all the time. <laughs> uh, and so it is a really nice card just to have available here. Um, if they attack, we are kind of forced into blocking from the standpoint of if they just have another thing. Ooh, okay, very nice. I like that. That was kind of a sick play. Um, Riveteer's Charm is so good, by the way. Uh, and how how controlled of them to not use it just to kill. Uh, that was really, really good. Okay, cool. So we are going to take five here, which means we are probably just going to have to gain three, uh, which is really underwhelming, but it's fine. Uh, yep. Don't love that. Uh, not a whole lot we can do about it, unfortunately. We're just going to have to kind of Roll with the punches here. It looks like they will lose this Graveyard Trespasser, which is actually quite nice. Okay. Uh, definitely Titan. Um, if nothing else, we get to gain the life here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this down. Let's... Game 5, definitely, to get out of range here. Um... I think it's probably going to be... Oof. Actually, I don't know. Let's spread this out. I'm not 100% sure this is the correct move, honestly. Uh, I am going to draw a card here. Another Glorious Sunrise. Okay. Um, interesting. So they can just straight shoot us for 13. <laughs> uh, which is terrible. That's good news that they are cycling that. That might mean they just don't have any great plays this turn. Um, we also, ooh, even better. Uh, we also are gonna get to play this Glorious Sunrise for free. Uh, and so there is a world where we actually start digging out of this. Uh, Titan really did kind of save us a little bit there. This has also been a very long game, but a very good game. 
All right, are they gonna shoot us is the question. Uh, this is the scary moment. <laughs> um, thankfully, they only have one mana available. So even in the worst case scenario of that being like a voltage surge, uh, if they attack in, we definitely just block with Titan. And then theoretically, we can draw ourselves out of this, but we'll see. Uh, unfortunately, some of our big heavy hitter creatures did go to the bottom of the deck. Okay, and they didn't have it. Uh, perfect. So let's get both of these down. Um, pretty easy there. Let's go ahead. I'm going to draw and I'm going to gain three. So we do need to kind of save ourselves as much as we can here. Uh, the question is, do we attack in? I think we attack with just the 4-4. Four -four. Uh, and if they choose to block, they choose to block. And that's fine. Um, all right, let's go ahead and Jewel Thief. All right. Uh, I mean, shields are up here as best they can be. Uh, let's hope they can't just kill us. Uh, Fable is fine. I'm not overly concerned about that. If we survive a Soren ultimate, that's a pretty, that's a pretty bomb play. You know what I mean? Um, all right, let's do this. Uh, we will pull a land. Fantastic. Um, Let's, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Does this untap the land? I should know that and I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so we'll go ahead and throw this out. I'm gonna gain three again, just to kind of get out of range and then we'll draw another card. Land's not great. Um, I'm gonna attack with, I think these three. Uh, this has Vigilance, so it's kind of a free attack. Not 100% free, of course, but it is pretty close. Uh, and so, basically, we just need to threaten their life total pretty pretty carefully from the standpoint of uh, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we just have nothing left. Um, but we do have quite a bit still going on, so we'll see. They did only discard, excuse me, one card. This has been a, a really, really good game. Um... Even if we lose, I am perfectly happy with the way this game panned out. This has been phenomenal. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm assuming this is a meat hook, like it kind of has to be, uh, which is kind of fine. Um, it's not fine, but it's whatever. Um, Yep, there it is. So they're gonna sweep for a lot. Do we just die? They gain these life, the, this life. Oh no, we just, yeah, okay. Fair enough, all right. <laughs> and we're back to square one. Uh, good news, bad news. We don't have a whole lot of lands, I believe, left in the deck. I mean, we do, but not, you know, we've we've deck thinned quite a bit. So the hope is we draw na land. <laughs> okay, uh, well, we'll play it. Um, <laughs> we'll gain six, go back up to 10. That's not ideal. Um, all right, well, here we are. <laughs> what a crazy game. This is like a 15 minute game or so at this point. They blitzed this, so that's quite good for them. They're blitzing this, which means I think we die. So this deals eight and then when they die, we take two. So that's game. That was very good. Honestly, not upset at all. That was a killer, killer game. Thank you so much, Lost Game. That was a great game. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're just dead. Fair enough. Guys, let's jump into a quick game too. We'll try and make it a quick game too. Let's see if we can get it. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, bit of an odd hand, but I think we will try and keep it, uh, anticipating that this might be a troublesome hand, of course, uh, but that's fine. Looks like Delver is the play. Interesting. All right, so we'll just lead on the Cascade here. Uh, pretty straightforward start, I think. Wow, early, early flip. Very well done, opponent. Uh, definitely scary and probably going to end in a loss for us. 
Uh, just from the standpoint of this is going to be hard to deal with. Uh, we do have the channel here that we can use to bounce it at some point. Uh, that we're definitely not close to that. Um, we will be next turn, which is nice. Opponent going to go ahead and consider. So we know one card in hand. We don't know what five cards. Probably four. Yeah, lands. We're going to hit take three. What's nice is they don't have, at least so far, they have not been playing combat research, which is like one of the biggest cards they could have. Um, awesome. All right, I'm gonna try and play the Jewel Thief, and anticipating this might just get countered. Um, but even if it does next turn, we can uh, channel out the the uh, uh, Delver. Yep, okay. Uh, so we're taking a lot of damage here. Worth noting what can happen is we just Glorious Sunrise at some point and mitigate all the damage uh, that we are taking. All right, um, I think we pass right now, as much as I don't want to, uh, and we're going to end up, yep, let's make sure we are doing this at their worst possible scenario. All right, uh, so they could Fading Hope, they could phase it out, they could do a lot of things here, so, I mean, Fading Hope, I guess, is kind of useless, but um, they could have had, like, Slip Out the Back or something along those lines. Thankfully, it looks like they did not. They did discard a land. Okay. I would love, what, just a land on top? A land on top would be killer. Uh, and truthfully, any land will do as long as it's an untapped land. Okay. All right. Um, now what? I mean, Glorious Sunrise is fun. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do this. This is more of a bait, actually. Uh, I'm anticipating they have a counter, is the takeaway. Uh, I don't want them to counter the Sphinx. You know what I mean? Uh, they had Spell Pierce specifically. Okay, fair enough. That was very good. And they flip again with a negate. That's good to know. Um, all right. That does lean me into Sphinx a little bit heavier, um, knowing that they would be able to counter the Glorious Sunrise here. Topiary Stomper, unfortunately, is not very good here. Um, whoops, whoops, whoops. No, oh no, that was a complete accident. I, that was a complete accident. I was actually thinking of playing Jewel Thief into Topiary Stomper and, or the Sphinx, and I just clicked the wrong thing. That's fine. Bad play on my end. They just negate it. That's cool. All right. <laughs> Here's to hoping. <laughs> uh, we'll see what they do this turn. I mean, chances are we're just dead, but that's okay. Nice one. Okay. Taken three. Don't love that. All right. I mean, we just have to try for the Sphinx and hope they don't counter it. I'm assuming they, they have like a make disappear, uh, which is fine. If they do, we, we definitely lose. We completely misplayed last time. Yep. Good game by the opponent. Uh, just unfortunate, but you know what? That's okay. We got two losses and we still got to play a really awesome deck in my opinion. So let's go ahead, guys. We'll wrap this one up. All right, guys, so Simic Ramp, unfortunately not yielding a win here. However, uh, I will still say, I think this deck is actually quite fun. I, I think the first game, uh, the opponent having Meat Hook Masker was kind of backbreaking for us. Had they not had that, which they won't in like two days, three days, uh, one day actually, I think. Um, <laughs> if they didn't have the Meat Hook Masker, we probably would have been able to snag that win uh, solely because that was actually how they won. That's how they got rid of our board. If they didn't have that, I think we would have been okay. Uh, and so I would suggest that that first game, uh, while a very good game, and again, thank you so much for that game. Uh, I believe it was Lost King. Um, I do think we could have won that one had Meat Hook not been in the format. Uh, as far as that second game, A, we misplayed. B, that was just a difficult matchup for us. They've got all the counters in the world. Uh, and unfortunately, we weren't able to stick anything. And so that's going to happen. I don't think that's, that's unlikely to happen a good bit. Uh, and so it is what it is. Regardless, 
Uh, I think this deck is really fun. <laughs> I like it a lot. It does a lot of fun stuff. I love Glorious Sunrise. I love uh, the World Spell as well. That's a really cool card. Uh, and we did get to see it do its thing, at least in that first game. So all in all, definitely worth a try, but I would wait until that Meat Hook ban actually goes into effect on Arena. I think that's going to make a huge difference. So guys, thank you so much. Again, I hope you had a great week. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. We will be here tomorrow with the collection update series, so I hope you'll join us for that. Uh, but again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Have a great day.